chat. Hello. I think we're waiting. We're still waiting for the zoning administrator, Mayara. Okay. That's And great. I think the applicant's representative also is has not joined the meeting. Okay. Sounds good. You'll just let me know. Yeah, of course. They're all here. Thanks. Jason, can you tell me if Eric will be joining us? You can go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, Eric's right here beside me. I'm here. Oh, okay. So he's not joining separately. Okay. Then I no. think we're good to go, Matt. Um, Jason, if you'll go ahead and turn on your camera. Jason, Eric, Eric. Wonderful. Well, thank you. It looks like it's uh, five o'clock and time uh, to get started. This is the uh, appeals uh, hearing. Uh, it's Thursday, November 21st, 2024 for the Salt Lake City uh, Planning Division appeals hearing. And we have one matter on the agenda this afternoon, evening. Um, a variance request for setback and building coverage um, for the property at 1101 West, 400 South in Salt Lake City. And the property owner, Jason Seaton, is here and has a representative, uh, Eric Sansom, with him. Uh, we also note the presence of various planning uh, uh, staff from the city. Uh, so how this will, will proceed is we'll first uh, just love to hear from uh, the uh, applicant, um, uh, Eric or Jason, uh, and or both, uh, just to kind of uh, set set the stage and give us an idea of of your request. Just so you all know, as the appellate here and so I, I have, you know, read through all of the materials in the in the staff report, and. Uh, and so I'm, you know, familiar with what's happening. But if you want to set the stage, and as as, and I know you know this, but just to, um, you know, clarify what was already said <clears throat> in the staff report that the, um, you know, that that responsibility for um, proving the points of a variance are, you know, rest on on you, and, and so we look to you to provide that. Um, that um, evidence, if you will, that those arguments to help an appeals hearing officer uh, to be able to find uh, if if there is in fact a, a variance, and that responsibility rests on you as the applicant to to provide those those materials. Obviously, the staff report um, uh, finds differently, and so. Uh, just I just I just want to make that clear that that burden will be on you to uh, uh, if, uh, if you were to prevail to um, 
overcome what has been written in the in the staff report. But having said that, uh, again, that's that's why we're here for a, a, an appeals hearing. So, um, so after you have, uh, you know, at least given your initial presentation or thoughts or everything else, I'll give uh, the planning staff an opportunity to respond to that, and 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 then I'll let you have the last word. And I may have questions and. Um, along the way uh but uh let if that sounds okay with everybody why don't we turn the um time over to, again jason or eric and uh uh hear what hear what you have to say about this uh this request okay yeah we're gonna we've got some notes here i'm gonna pull up here that we can read from great thank you what was it <laughs> yeah, so I think we we want to start off just by addressing the four points that the uh, the staff uh, notes address. Um, I think initially they 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 start talking about the that we're requesting <clears throat> um, a front yard setback um, adjustment, I guess, if you will. Um, Kind of the way that we tackled that. I mean, we physically went out and measured these uh, the other homes that sit next to us, um, and we did find that that the fourteen foot setback that they're talking about as a, an average along the block is correct. But if we um, eliminate the two properties that we felt are kind of skewing that number, um, that have a 34 foot setback and a 20 foot six inch setback um when you don't when you don't include that um the average on the block face drops back down to 11 feet um on the average so we do understand that it is an average and that um that the 14 foot mark does make sense if you average it out according to the block base but we do also feel that those two properties are skewing that number. Um, and we did express to Andy that uh, we we are amenable to some things, um, but that so far in any discussions that we've had with the uh, planning department or with Andy specifically, um, there hasn't really been any sort of opportunity to debate certain aspects of this. Um, we've only ever been cited the code and what we need to meet and why we need to meet it. Um, but never any, I guess, deliberation on on those certain things. So I don't know if that's something that we can do now or how you want to proceed, but we're, we we would like to just discuss that, get your viewpoints on it and any of the other administrators, how, how that applies to us or how it doesn't, or if there's any sort of talking points that, that can be brought in specifically on this first subject. Well, let me, let me add to that. If, I mean, if we're making kind of some common sense um, questions if we, or we have common, kind of this common sense way of thinking about this, when it comes to this variance, we just want to be in line with the other houses that are there. We just want to be, there's a bunch of houses that are all set the same and we, we don't want to move it back. We want to build just like the other houses that are there, the house that we, that, that so and those two properties are actually separated from us by the river. They're on the, the west side of the of the Jordan River where, that have those huge setback numbers. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with that, I, I, I think one foot difference. So we're set at 10 feet without those two uh, giant setbacks. The the average would drop back down to 11 feet. So we're we're within one foot. Um, and then if you include the block face to the east of us, it, it evens out even more. There's So there's three houses in a row in our block face that are all the same. They're within six inches of each other. And then if you go east on the other block, which I know technically doesn't uh, match according to the code, but if just visually you look at that, the next four down that block face are also within one foot of the same front yard setback. So that would put in total, you know, seven properties that are all almost exactly the same in a row. So, 
So let um so let me let me just um make a couple of comments and then um if you, if you want to open this up this this first issue uh, I'll I'll give the city a chance to re to respond. Um but but I will say I mean um one one of the things that that that, that was mentioned is trying to find some common sense applications right of the, of this and 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 uh, mr seaton you mentioned um being only one foot off on 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 the on the difference and everything and and that's what a variance is right the the the, the variance process is specifically the code is what the code is and the city is required to to enforce that code candidly to the letter. I mean, uh, if it's 10 feet, it's 10 feet and it's not 10 and a half feet. And it's uh, 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 unfortunately, but the variance process says, okay, there may be some situations where a variance is justified and the statute gives some very clear guidance on, 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 on what standards have to be met to allow you to say well the standard is 10 feet but in this case 11 feet is 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 okay because of again the unique aspect of the property or whatever might be all of the different things that the city lays out in its staff report and so that's what this process is this this is not the process for sort of negotiating with the city saying hey we'll give you this if we give you that I mean, this is not the, my, my only point is this is not the forum for that. I don't have the authority to, you know, negotiate uh, or say, OK, you guys are willing to do this and willing to do that, that uh, that that would have to be done separately, you know, with with, with the city. I uh, my the, the scope of this appeal is limited to do you meet the standards requesting variance from whatever the code is? And, and so it's helpful if we speak to those particular issues and standards. But I will, I wonder, uh, and Andy, I don't know if that's you or not, if you want to sort of respond at least to the initial, this initial uh, point that they brought up regarding the, the average. And maybe one of the questions is, you know, they mentioned these two properties that are, if, if these were not part of it, if we excluded them, it would bring the average way down. And I think that's sort of the point of the average, right? You take all the different properties and, and find a number, but does the city ever exclude properties from a block face? Is there a standard procedure that the city uses? Um, is, is there uh, any wiggle room there, I think is what, what the applicant is asking. And I don't wanna put words in your mouth, uh, Mr. Seaton or Mr. Sandstrom, but um, anyway, Andy, I don't know if you want to, if you have any response to those questions or that I issue in particular. Uh, sure. I, I think that the way you described it is the way that we look at it, that um, our job is to administer the code and we don't have any leeway to negotiate what those requirements are other than this process that we're undertaking tonight. Um, as far as the front yard setback is concerned, the existing building does have a 10 foot setback. So the 14 foot requirement that the front yard setback has to meet the average on the block face applies only to new construction. So if any sort of uh, remodel or reconstruction of that portion of the building was proposed or uh, something along those lines, it, it may be possible to preserve that existing front yard setback. But for uh, new construction, it would need to meet the block face average, which would be 14. And um, I don't think that there are any specific uh, circumstances related to the site that would impact the ability to comply with that front yard setback. Um, so I, I think that, that would be kind of an initial response to that. And Mr. Roland, if I could, this is John Anderson. I'm a, yeah, I, do. You bet, um, I just wanted to mention that the, how we define 
block phase is actually a defined term and it goes from street to street. Um, and so the longer your block is, sometimes it's disadvantageous to you, unfortunately, because there's more opportunity for there to be movement. Um, you know, and I agree with what, uh, you know, the petitioner is saying the houses on either side, they're all in a line, but the problem is we have to take it in by the pure defined notion of what is a block face. And so fortunately it is from street to street. And there are those two houses that do skew those numbers a bit. So I, don't, I, I guess, I guess my, my problem is not understanding the purpose of a code. So, because it would seem to me that codes are set up in such a way that if if an area is zoned, if an area is zoned, if an area is zoned for uh, for a factory or something like that, it's a completely different set of rules. It's zoned that way. If and so, therefore, we we have these subsets of things when you get down to housing and, and different things. And now we're in a housing scenario. Um, it would seem to me that the rules are set there so that you don't do something crazy and you're trying to keep something in line with what's around it. And in this case, we're trying to be ultra in line with it at the front to just be in line with all the other houses. But any variance that someone else made at some point in history um, has a, is having an effect on that um, before the code, I, I, my, my, my point about codes are to keep in line and not get too crazy out in the left field. And what we're trying to do is look more in line than the code is asking us to by being in line with the other houses. So we can move it back. That's fine. That's not the problem. The problem is aesthetically for the neighborhood. Now you got this house is set back and the rest of them are forward of it, right? An extra four feet. That's what I'm getting at is it seems to be lost or 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 we just accept codes for what they are, whoever makes them up. And then they're just given to the city to vote on by a bunch of people who don't build or look at anything. They're not architects and they're deciding, yep, whatever's in that book is good. But the but the the aesthetics of what's there gets thrown out in that process. Is that the way it's just going to be? It doesn't matter. Well, uh, uh, I mean, unfortunately, the code, I mean, the code, unfortunately, doesn't, I mean, they have to draw the line somewhere, right, and set those standards up uh, to keep uh, the development the way in, in, in the manner that the elected officials believe it should be developed in a, in a particular way. And so, um, unfortunately, the code sometimes, the outcome sometimes creates unusual situations like this where where it might feel unfair or be frustrating when you're trying to especially when you're dealing with properties that are so old right that have been around a long time and zoning codes do change and evolve over time and and requirements change and uh, evolve over time and so you're dealing with an older property and you are trying to develop this and make it nice and and i understand bringing it in line but unfortunately, that we do have to follow the code to a T. And again, there's the variance process that is set in place that say, okay, if you meet some very specific standards that the variance statute lays out, we can adjust those, those numbers accordingly. And that's what this hearing is about. And, and I mean, we can, you know, uh, like you know, like the first standard is it would, would it cause an unreasonable hardship for the applicant that is not necessary to carry out the general purpose of this title, which is this is a um, uh, uh, a residential uh, nature and character of the neighborhood, um, and then it it goes on to say that I I can't find I to identify an unreasonable hardship. Um, it, uh, I can't find it and let the hardship has to be related to the size, shape, or topography of the property for which the variance is sought. And the alleged hardship comes from circumstances peculiar to the property, not from conditions that are general to the neighborhood. And that's, so this is just one, this is just one of the standards there, there are four particular, I guess there are uh, actually there are more than more than that, four or five, but but they go through in their staff report and identify 
whether we comply, whether this app, whether this application complies with with those standards. And unfortunately, it's an uphill battle, admittedly, to get a variance. I mean, I'll, I'll just be candid with you, um, uh, because <laughs> those standards are difficult to find. So, it's. So is that basically that's a long way of saying the code is what the code is and generally those code standards have to be followed no and one knows what that means what what the codes mean no one knows no one can tell me why the code is that way and there's not it's just someone wrote in a book so what i need to do is go write a new code book what i'm getting at is it's just a book that someone decided we're going to follow these rules and yeah. but but no one can tell me why they're that way why did you choose that? Why is that? Yeah, that's the, that's right. the tough thing and about the, the city. No one in the city can tell me that. And there's not one person that can tell me. They can just say, that's the way it is. And I need to know some of that. Because if we're just adopting things for the sake of adopting things, then we can change that. We can write a new book and then have the city council vote on that. But my point <laughs> is, no one can tell me why that is. Why is it? And I would I would bet that someone would say someone would say well it's to keep the housing kind of in line and not letting it go off the rails into something else and in in within a certain you know uh in in this case r15000 right you're trying to keep it in that realm but what my my argument there is that it just no one can tell me why it has to be, why does it have to be that? If I want to put it in line with all the other houses, why can't I do that? That doesn't seem, no one can tell me why, because yeah. the code is not an answer and no one knows. Not a one person at the city has been able to tell me why. Yeah, and that, uh, yeah, unfortunately, yeah, the law is what it is. The code is there, you're right. It was, it was put in place by, um, you know, duly elected city council members and, um, the, whether there's a why or not, it is what it is. And so we have to, we're required by law to follow it. And I, and I you know, I know that's frustrating to hear, but this, uh, unfortunately, this is not the forum I, I, to, to, to get behind the why of laws. It's to apply them and, and see if there is reason to not apply them in a very limited circumstance. And so that's what we're trying to accomplish here and what I'm hoping you can help me with is tell me, you know, the, the reasons why these shouldn't apply. That, that's what matters to this particular hearing. Uh, so, so I think one of the things that we've been frustrated by also is that that part, part of our reason why they shouldn't apply is just being thrown out by the city completely just because, you know, well, just because we said so, right? <clears throat> so that's an issue for us too. Also, one other thing that's a little bit frustrating is uh, just the fact that, um, you know, there is a variance process, but every time we talk to someone about a variance, um, all they say to us is, well, you have to meet code. We don't allow variances if they don't meet code, right? So what is the purpose actually of the variance department? It's, it seems frustrating that, you know, we have to pay all of this money and spend all this time to go through this process, but then they're all reason is being thrown out of the window and all common sense doesn't exist because they all just say, well, the code is this, you have to meet code. Well, if, if that's what I wanted to know or do, all I would have done is turned in a set of plans to the planning department and had them recite code to me. So, so I think that's where we're frustrated because we always have been under the impression that that the variance request would be met with some sort of common sense and logic so that we could potentially work outside the bounds of code. But when we get responses like, well, the code is what it is just because we said that, well, that doesn't, that doesn't imply that a variance is even possible, which, you know, you just stated that variances are exceptionally hard to even be granted. Andy Holka said that if he legally could tell us to not even apply for a variance, that he would tell us to just not even apply. So that doesn't seem to us like the city is being amenable to uh, allow these old properties that are even described by the city as non-complying properties to, to be bettered, right? 
So, so I think that's where our reasoning comes from is that we're trying to improve the property that's been abandoned for 20 years that we were able to acquire. We're trying to improve the facade of the neighborhood. Um, we're trying to make a place where it doesn't attract homeless people and other sorts of riffraff that have gone on there historically before we obtained it. Um, and we're being blocked at every avenue. And not only are we being blocked at every avenue, but we're being told that we have to diminish our property from how it's been for the last 120 years. So, so not only are you saying, no, we can't grant variances, you're also saying that we have to make the current house that's sitting there even smaller in order to meet current code. And so I think that's where we're frustrated because there hasn't even been an option to rebuild what sits there the way that it is, which we'll get into in a, in a few minutes about the, the state of the foundation and how it's constructed and how it doesn't meet code and all of those things. But, but our frustration stems from the, the lack of uh, amenable conversation from the city in any facet. It's just been a hard nose. No, you don't meet code and it doesn't matter what you think or say, or quite frankly, what the rest of the community thinks or says. So I think if we move on to the next point, which- Yeah, let's move on to the next point, please. Yeah, so the, the, next, the next portion that the, the staff report talks about um, is our side yard setback. Um, so we, we requested a, a, a zero foot setback is how they've worded that. Um, <clears throat> and like I stated before, we believe that, that, that adopting that code is a hardship for our particular property, because like I said, for 118 years to be specific, that house has sat there and it sat there before any codes even existed or were even a, a thought in the city. Um, and like I said, currently it is out of compliance by three feet, the way that it exists today. So that's the point that I was trying to make a, a few seconds ago is that in order to meet code, I would have to eliminate three feet of width in my house if we chose to build a new house, which at this point is pretty much the only feasible option because we, we don't even have a concrete foundation at that home. It's, it's a sandstone foundation that we're incapable of tying new foundation in that will meet code. Um, and so, you know, Andy has offered help several times by saying, well, you know, why don't you just remodel the property? It, you could keep the same footprint if it's considered a remodel. Well, as a builder myself, which I've done since I was 18 years old, I don't know how to save 25% of a property that you need to completely redo a foundation. It's not an option. So again, what the city is telling us is, well, because your house is so old and because it existed before city code did, now you're unable to do anything with it, right? Because even if you did do something with it, you wouldn't meet the code requirements for uh, structural integrity or building safety. So we're backed up into a corner by the city who's saying code, 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 no matter what, no exceptions, even though we pay the variance department salaries and give them money from taxpayer dollars to grant variances but they never do according to you and according to andy holka so it's exceptionally frustrating to us and you know it seems like every time we bring up a, what we feel like is a common sense or valid talking point it's just overshadowed by well the code says this so it doesn't matter what you're saying Uh, uh, do you have more to cover? Uh, uh, why, why don't we just continue through all of the all of the points, and then we can give the city a chance to respond. Okay. Yeah. So the third the third talking point is the the building coverage from forty to forty six percent. Um. That that stems from a desire to update that property to just kind of a a modern status quo of having a garage. Um, so we exceed that square footage requirement by 311 uh, square feet, um, which bumps that percentage up to 46%. Um, 
we have talked about, and they actually even reference it in the staff report of, you know, that there are some public right of ways that don't apply to our property. Um, because the, again, when the city curb and gutter and sidewalks were put in, in 1962, um, the property lines weren't adjusted. And so we're actually missing, um, five feet of our property inside the sidewalk on the side yard and also on the front yard setback or frontage, excuse me, not setback. So we do have a picture of that, that kind of illustrates, uh, I guess in lay terms, how this looks on our property. Um, so if, I don't know, are we able to share, to share pictures? Yes, you have the option to share. Um, it should be at the bottom of your screen. There's a green arrow. Okay. Let me find the photo here. We're trying to pull up a, a picture here of that. There it is. All right. Screen. Asking us for permissions here to share. It's not popping up for me to allow permissions for you. I'm not sure why. Just my computer, just a second here. Okay. All right. So can you see what, what we're seeing or no? That's just the picture. Can you yes, see we can see your yeah. pictures. Yep. Yeah, we can see. Okay. So that what you're seeing there is a short, the short grass is our property. The long grass is city right of way, whatever that means. I think that just means the city owns this, right? So I I let this grow up just for this to kind of just to make a quick and easy reference of where our property line is compared to the sidewalk. So when when this little flyer went out, people I had a lot of folks ask me about this is you want to build right on the sidewalk? And I'm like, no, 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 no. We want to build on the property line. The property line is halfway, basically halfway between the house and the sidewalk. So, and then if we did build on that, it would match the house across the street that's built on the property line and still has that width of grass um, there. So we would just be mirroring that house. But the that's width just, of grass, meaning the, the longer portion of the, the long, The longer portion. So yeah, yeah the, the new building that we would like to build would build up to where that line, where the, the tall grass starts. Gotcha. Yeah. So it's not... Yeah, so we kind of felt that that was kind of a, this is a good way to clarify that. This is just let it grow and then mow just our portion. <laughs> yeah. So that's it's just for a reference. And that wraps around the entire front of the house too, right? Yeah, which also applies to everyone on the block face in both directions, directions. right? Everyone is missing the same amount of uh, frontage. Of frontage. And we... I mean, this we believe that that happened because when the city put in sidewalks and the park strip and did all of that, that none of the property lines were adjusted to absorb what visually everyone deems as their yard, right? And so we think that 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 is is something that that applies to our property and and our request for the setback, also because Jason mentioned that directly across Eleventh West the the house has exactly the same setback that we're requesting um they're five feet from the sidewalk and and that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish as well so you know we we've kind of talked about some of the talking points being general to the neighborhood um and and the the different widths of of properties and and the square footage of them um you know so <clears throat> Those things I think are unique to us because specifically we are a corner lot and not an interior lot. 
um, because if an interior lot was the average, which Andy's provided for us, which is 39 feet, um, you would be able to be to build a 31 foot wide house with two foot overhangs and be within code. Um, and our plans are for a 31 foot wide house with two foot overhangs. And so we're already diminished because of the corner lot aspect. We then are uh, diminished again because we're three feet under an average. Um, and so it's difficult for us to, I guess, comply with code because the code is trying to diminish our property completely. Um, it's actually trying to make our house be <laughs> less width than a double wide trailer, to be quite frank. So um, this document that we have here, which they, we they can- can't, They can't see it. Oh. They can only see the window, the green. Oh, okay. Um, so that, that I guess is part of our, our stance on the 40% versus the 46% that we're, um, requesting. Um, and then the fourth talking point that the staff report brings up is, um, the garage door setback from the sidewalk. Um, so I guess just recently in the last few weeks, Andy, correct me if I'm wrong, um, city code has changed from 20 feet to 17 foot six. Um, we, we requested a, a 14 foot setback so that we can build a two car garage, um, that's oriented facing to the East. Um, and we've specifically oriented it to the East, um, because we currently have a non-legal public utility, uh, that is blocking access to our property. Um, from the alleyway. So a, a power pole and their tension line sits on our property. And uh, there is no legal easement that has been agreed upon with our property and with public utilities to block access to our property. So because of that blocked access, we now are attempting to build a garage that faces 1100 West because there's no access from our alleyway. Um, so to be quite frank, if that doesn't portray a hardship on our property by an illegal uh, easement, I, I'm not quite sure what does. So I don't know if you anyone wants to speak to that or, or, or what. We can continue or... or do you just want us to continue? Yeah, uh, no, no. Let, let, let's continue, and then um, give the, the city can um, can respond to these when they're given that that opportunity. It sounds like we ought to just get through everything you want to say, and then we can have a little bit of back and forth once we've been through everything. Okay, okay. And then, so the final uh, point in the staff report is um, the hardship standard. Specifically, they claim that that our uh, none of our property rights are being infringed and that, that we don't have any sort of hardship claims that have to go with our property. Um, they claim that they're self-imposed and that because we're trying to build a new house that um, none of this should apply. So to quote the staff report, it says, while staff agrees that the lot is narrower than the minimum lot width required for new lots in R15000, this con condition is general to the neighborhood. And it says this demonstrates that narrow lot width is a circumstance that is not peculiar to the property and can commonly be found throughout this neighborhood. While we agree with those words, um, we believe that uh, because our lot is a corner lot, um, that we don't generally apply to all of the lots in the neighborhood um, because we have to abide by different standards than generally in the neighborhood. So we believe that, that that requirement should apply to only corner lots because we don't have the same standards as interior lots, which we've already kind of addressed with the lot width um, average um, and how wide they're able to build houses on interior lots versus corner lots. And so with our findings, which we can provide measurements for several corner lots within a three or four block radius of our property, um, almost every single corner lot in, in that four or five block radius um, does not comply. And all, it, they almost all of them have the same setback that we're requesting. 
So if we apply a, a statement generally, we believe that that should be applied to corner lots and not as a general consensus um, from the neighborhood because we reside in different standards that we're supposed to meet. So that's one thing that we've addressed with the hardship um, uh, standards. And I believe that with all of our other discussions, we've kind of addressed the, the other points that that some of the the staff have addressed with us. Um, I think Jason has some more things to add here, though. Yeah, I think uh, the other the other thing that's uh, there are a couple of things. I I know that we're we're not here to dicker on this stuff, but um, there there is a way. There's a couple ways for us to uh, maybe come to the table, and I know there's a separate. It's a separate line item with the city, and that is to uh, ask for uh, that strip of land to to be given to us that from the sidewalk the long the long grass strip all the way around um if we did that then i think we would be in compliance for almost for most of almost everything um if that was granted if we got to that point then we would be five our square footage would be over 500 and something 589 feet over the along over over what we would require so that would fix that. So we're going to come to the table later with that. Um, we're going to, we want to go through that process and see if we can do that. And that would fix a lot of things uh, percentage wise. But I think um, there was something else too. Um, shoot. I'm sorry, this completely left me. But anyway, I initially that that little bit, and I granted it's another thing to do, but that would take us further into compliance. Oh yeah, I guess you could say that if the city was to give us our 50 foot frontage, then we would be completely in compliance. We wouldn't be here at all, right? If if we if we were allowed the half the street that cuts between the block there then none of this would be an issue because then we would be in code. We would have, we would be a completely compliant house, right? We would have our 50 foot frontage. Our percentages would be correct. We would be away from everything uh, in all appropriate proportions. And, and so that goes back to us wondering why we're applying modern code to a neighborhood or most of the city for that matter and saying, well, you just can't. And and so we'll take that up with the city council, but, uh, but that's neither here nor there at this moment. We'll uh, that's it. If, if we come back to the table, which we're planning on doing, it's like 375 bucks or $71 or something to, to go through that process to ask for that, to say, okay, we want our yard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, because like I said, people believe that we wanted to build right on the sidewalk. And, uh, that was kind of a misinterpretation of everything because no one, yeah. no one looks at their property lines, the real property lines. So anyway, I think yeah. that's, so, so we do have a, an app, we actually have a, a document with, um, all of these talking points and they've all been written out. Um, is there a way that we could send these directly to the administrators or, or what, does that if you, if you can, yeah, if you can send them to the planner, I don't know if you if you've been already working with Andy, you can email it to him, and then he can uh, forward it on to to me for uh, inclusion in the you know in the official record of of the hearing. Okay, I'll do that right now. I, I have Andy's email, so I can just send him directly. You have a Pages That'd version. Great, thank you. Andy, can you open Pages, Apple's Pages? Are you, you on a word? Are you on a Microsoft machine? Um, yeah, I'm on Microsoft, but I, I can probably figure it out. But yeah, if, if you could provide a word or a PDF, that would probably we'll, be easier. Yeah. Okay. I can probably make a PDF out of this. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. Thank you very much. Let, why don't I um, give the city a chance to respond? I know there's, um, uh, uh, so I'll turn the time over to Andy to do that, and uh, and, and would like to 
you know, especially have you address the question about the garage being blocked by the utility. Um, does that, is that a, a, a hardship that, and, and I don't remember that being specifically addressed, although I admittedly I could have missed it in the staff report, but if you could uh, uh, address that. And then I'd love to have you address among what, everything that you talk about too, just talk about why are we, why not you would consider a corner lot. Is that unique? Is that a, does that create a unique hardship? The fact that it's on a corner lot, is it treated differently than the other lots? And, and, and again, how you would address that in, in the context of this variance request? Sure. Yeah, I can, I can address those. So it, as far as corner lots versus interior lots in the R1 5000 district, the combined side yard setback requirement is the same. Interior lots do require a four foot interior setback on one side and 10 feet on the other. So that is the same as the corner lots, although the corner side yard requires that 10 foot the larger setback to be on the street facing side but the overall setback requirements by the side yards is still the same for corner and interior lots in this district um as to the questions about the garage and i think this kind of gets to a, a little bit about just how we view these requests it, we are reviewing the specific design that was submitted along with the narrative that was submitted and reviewing those specifically and not uh, it's not necessarily appropriate for the city to um, tell an applicant what they should do but just to outline the requirements and you know give some options or or recommendations to consider and then they would need to design so that there may be a condition related to the alley access um, that I don't believe was included in the original narrative although that it I do believe it was mentioned at one point in one of our conversations but um I, I anyway just the the point I'm trying to make is that we have evaluated the design that was proposed and so you know if there are alternate designs we could have maybe considered those previously but not, no alternates were proposed and so it's hard to say um there may be an issue with accessing from the alley but that doesn't necessarily mean that the garage would have to be in the exact spot with this exact orientation as proposed detached versus attached you know one car two car there are a lot of different possibilities for what could be designed on any given lot and so um if there there, there may be an issue I, I can't speak to the specifics about the alley but um that doesn't mean that there may not be another way to build a garage that is either detached or attached that does fit within the required setbacks. Um, I, I think, let's see, I took down a few other notes. Um, I One comment that was made was that the uh, frustration expressed about the city, um, maybe the impression you get is that the city does not or cannot approve variances but that's not correct variance process does exist for a reason and variances are approved but as we've discussed they do have to meet a very specific set of standards in order to be approved um if you'd like i've got some slides prepared i could give just a kind of a quick overview of the request and the standards or maybe just hit on a few points and then I would also be happy to answer any additional questions. Let me, um, can you see my screen okay? Yes. Great, let me. Um, so as, as 
you've already mentioned, I know you're familiar with the report, so I'll just go briefly, but um, here's an aerial view of the subject property. It's on the corner of 4th South and 1100 West, um, right across from Franklin Elementary in Poplar Grove neighborhood. Um, and the street view shows the existing home. And as has already been mentioned, it is a vacant property and it is um, in poor condition. Uh, we've already discussed um, the requested variances, but this image on the screen is the applicant site plan. I've outlined the building footprints and the um, property boundaries and also added some measurements illustrating the proposed and the required setbacks. Um, and as the applicant mentioned, those property lines are about five foot in from the back of sidewalk. But the uh, as proposed, the a variance would be required for the front yard, corner side yard of the principal building, and the garage door um, vehicle staging standards as well. And then also lot coverage has been mentioned, so I, I won't go over that again. In the report, we raise a couple key issues. Um, one is the encroachment of the roof eave over the property line into the right of way. So that is a significant issue in this, um, both to zoning and public utilities. Public utilities reviewers reviewed the plans and state that the standards for stormwater drainage prohibit um, any roofs from extending across property lines. So um, if a variance is approved, the plans would need to be revised at least to address that issue. I know the applicant mentioned that they may um, look to pursue acquiring that property or some sort of encroachment easement or to either narrow the building or, or remove that roof eave. So that would be something that would need to be addressed that could not be um, approved by a variance. Um, another point of discussion that was brought up is that the existing home is non-complying. We've got information about the history of the property in the staff report. Um, one of the requirements for variances is that they can't be greater than the minimum variation necessary to relieve the hardship. And so, as I mentioned, we, we don't have any alternate designs, um, so we're just looking at what was proposed, but where it may be possible that another design could either preserve those existing non-complying setbacks or comply with the current setbacks and coverage standards. Um, in this case, the proposal would increase the degree of non-compliance. And so it's, it's not that um, we're saying the only option is to shave off three feet off that corner side, for example. But the proposal widens the home beyond what is there now. And so, you know, if if there was a different design that was in line with the existing setbacks, that may affect our analysis and recommendation. But in this case, what's being proposed is to increase the degree of non-compliance beyond what's existing which is an indication that the request may be greater than the minimum necessary to relieve hardships. Um, another point um, to bring up is that um, the primary hardship that was stated in the applicant's narrative is the narrow width of the property, making it difficult to fit a modern home. But as we look across the block and the block to the east, you can see that it's quite common for properties in this neighborhood to be narrower than 50 feet and to have buildings that are narrower as well. Um, quickly run through the variance standards. Um, the appeals hearing officer, I think we've already gone over this, but cannot grant a variance that's greater than the minimum necessary to relieve the hardship. And so, again, where there may be possibilities to build 
a single family home. It is a property right in a single family district to have a single family home on that property. But if it's possible to build one that complies with the standards or otherwise uses the non-complying structure standards to preserve existing setbacks where there are other options um, that are less than what's being requested, that points to the fact that what's being requested is greater than the minimum necessary. And so we find that it does not comply with that standard. There are five general standards for variances that have to be met. Um, I, I, I guess I don't I want to go through all of them individually necessarily, but um, our finding is that the hardship is not peculiar to the property since the narrow width of the lot is a condition that's general to the neighborhood. And that again, if other options might allow a single family dwelling on the property, then without a variance, then that would mean the unique circumstances to the lot would not require a variance. Um, the lot coverage, for instance, the, the lot as exists is greater than 5,000 square feet, which is the minimum in the district. So there's no unique circumstances related to the lot size that would require a variance for lot coverage. Um, number four says that the variance will not substantially affect the general plan of the city and will not be contrary to the public interest. While we agree that um, building a single family dwelling on a single family lot is in line with the general plan of the city for this neighborhood, um, we do find that there are a few things that would be contrary to the public interest. As I previously mentioned, the roof eaves overhanging into the public right of way. There is a public interest in maintaining the right of way free from obstructions. And so that would be contrary to that interest. And um, the standards for a 17 and a half foot setback from the garage to the sidewalk is intended to provide vehicle staging area, basically uh, enough space for a car to park in the driveway without blocking the sidewalk. So by reducing that um, distance, that could also lead to obstructions in the public right of way, which may be contrary to the public interest. And so because we find that it does not meet the other standards for variances, we find that the spirit of the zoning ordinance is not observed. A um, few other requirements from the code, um, self-imposed or economic hardship. We cannot find an unreasonable hardship if it's self-imposed. Staff considers the hardship to be self-imposed due to the fact that it comes from the applicant's preference for a wider structure. And, and then uh, special circumstances is the last one. As discussed, because the narrow lots are common in the neighborhood, we find that there is no special circumstance that's unique to this individual property. So based on that review, uh, we find that it does not meet the standards for granting a variance um, based on those factors, as well as what's contained in your staff report. We recommend that you deny the variance request. Um, so that's all I have. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any additional questions. So, so one thing I just want to add is that slide where it showed an overhead view of all the properties in both directions. If you want to pull that up. Not one house in that picture complies with the things that you're telling us to comply with. Not one single one. In fact, there are some properties on that block face that are only 10 inches from their property line. So... Mm -hmm. I know we're trying to talk in generalities and sticking to the code, but it's funny that you would use a picture that depicts an entire two block space of the city where no one complies. And then you're trying to apply that to us. So, so look at the house. It's 35 feet wide on a 37 foot block on a 37 foot wide. Block. Yeah. You know, or, or the difference between any of those, the house width to the house width to lot width. 
that that's true. These properties, I obviously we have not done an in-depth analysis of every property on the block, but um, I think it is fair to say that these most of them do appear to be non-complying. Uh, probably a similar situation to yours. Uh, but again, I, the same standards would apply to any request given by those properties if they were proposing to demolish and rebuild. The city would require rebuild to be up to current standards. And they would also have the ability to use any of the non-complying structure code that allows for reconstruction of non-complying portions of the building or additions that are in line with existing non-complying setbacks. So those options would be available to those properties as well as they are to you, which was a one of the things that led to our findings and, and our recommendation is that perhaps there are other options available that may be worthy of exploring that would still allow you to enjoy your property rights. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Um, you know, Jason or Eric, uh, any, anything further to add or in response to uh, the city that hasn't already been been said that you might feel is helpful for me to hear? Um, so it's I think it's important to know that we live here in the neighborhood. We're not we're not coming from somewhere else. The reason that house is ours is because back in 2012, 2013, I was hearing so much about zombie houses in our neighborhood. We went around and made sure that someone was fixing. We picked five homes and every one of those homes has been fixed up by their owners. They are now occupied and look great. This house is the one we ended up with and are trying to make something better out of it for our neighborhood. That was the whole point of doing this. And this is the one that we keep, right? This is the one that we wanted to keep. So um, it's not it's not a flip scenario or a, we, we're here, this is ours and we're taking ownership of it. It's So we're willing to go the extra mile. We're gonna come back to the table with, I wanted to see how this was gonna go before I went ahead and started the process of of asking for that strip around our house, which will take care of some things. Um, and uh, I just, I think, I don't know, for what it, for, for what it's worth, we're here. You know, this is right down the street from where we're sitting right now. And that's, that's, I think that's an important factor. I, I, whether it holds weight or not, I don't know, but we're, we're, that's the whole purpose of this. And we want, on the other side of us, there is a same size lot that has an aplex put on it. It's brand new. It's not any wider. It's not any longer. It's the same thing. And that aplex changes the, the feel of the neighborhood. We're stepping outside. Granted, that's that's zoned for that now. I would I feel like I would have an easier time zoning, rezoning. Um to put in that same aplex on this piece of property than it is for me to just put back a single family home in our neighborhood. That, that is crazy to me. And that's the bit that I think we're, we're going to take that further to the city and the city council and say that, but, but it, for what it's worth, we're here, we're here with the house and, uh, and plan to be for a long time. So that's, uh, I guess that's it. Matt, would, we do have yeah. um, attendees here who want to uh, comment, it looks like, for the public oh, hearing. Thank you. I wasn't aware of that. That's great. Let's open that up uh, for uh, any public comment. Okay. First, I'm going to unmute Brittany Renee. You can go ahead and okay. speak. You have two minutes. Sure. Thank you. Um, I live 300 feet from this piece of property, and... I've listened to both sides and I get both sides and I get the city you're following the law, but in my listening to it, 
it doesn't seem reasonable. It doesn't seem like you're allowing for any allowances. And as somebody that does live 300 feet from the property and does live in the neighborhood and has seen people going in and out of that home, you have someone trying to make it better and trying to do it the right way. I get sure the roof overhang, fine, whatever, but the sidewalk bit, that's ridiculous. It, it goes to an alleyway where they would be the only people going back there. <laughs> like that's nonsense to me. And I'm honestly pissed off for them as someone who's sitting in one of these quote unquote remodeled homes, measuring my foundation underneath my bathroom with a pencil every few months to see if it's sinking. So for me, it's frustrating to hear this because my house was flipped poorly. There was, <laughs> I had to get, there was a lead in the paint and, and all sorts of things. And, and that was fine. Sold it to me just like that. An abatement company had to come in. My point is, is that the reason why so many of your citizens are screwed is because you're making it difficult for us to do things that are reasonable. They're asking for something reasonable. I would much rather that house block the sidewalk going to nothingness than have a house sitting there abandoned with people going in and out of it. It's, it's an eyesore and it's embarrassing to me personally living in the neighborhood to be sitting next to it. Thank I fully support them time. doing it. Okay, we have Barbara all on mute. You have two minutes. Did I just unmute it? Yes, okay. you can. Go ahead. I'm real. I don't know how to. I don't know how to work this stuff very well. But I live here. I walk by that house. I walked by that house when the person who died lived there, and we used to walk together. And now it's owned by the people who have boarded it up. They have tried to keep the homeless out. They have tried, and they're doing a good job. That's a that that sidewalk doesn't go to any place. If they have a garage back there that sticks out a little bit, it isn't going to be a problem for anybody. That's a neighborhood house back there. You got a problem? You got a problem with the drug dealers underneath 4th South. Let's get this these things taken care of. You've got somebody here who says, we want to remodel, we want to build a house. You can't remodel that place. I've been in it. The nicest thing I could say about it was that he could start any place because it all needed complete redoing. So taking it down and rebuilding. I have seen work that this person has done and he does a really nice job. So that's important that you have a good builder who cares about the neighborhood and would do a good job on 4th South because it does need doing. But, but this stuff, this stuff is very frustrating. It's frustrating for me as for somebody who's lived here for 39 years and watches this go on. Um, Thank you, Barbara. That's time. I'll give up. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Please raise your digital hand. Uh, we've got Ferris. Ferris, you can unmute yourself. You've got two minutes. Alrighty. Uh, my name is Dennis Ferris. I am the immediate prior city council representative for the area. And there's no question. I want to echo a lot of what Barbara, for example, said. Um, Jason has been a fixture in the neighborhood for quite some time, um, has definitely approached these types of projects with a bent towards improving this for the benefit of all the neighbors. Um, we know that, have every confidence that he's going to do a good job um, for this as if he were the person living there or living next door to it. Um, and I mean, I, I gotta agree with some of the other comments regarding the overhang especially with the having that much right of way on the property side of the sidewalk 
to not include just the park strip. I mean, that kind of seems a, a bit overbearing to say the least. So I, I definitely just want to pitch, you know, my full support behind this project. I think Jason would do a great job with it. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. And there's nobody else in the attendees list. Okay, thank you. That will close the, the public hearing portion. Are there any, either the applicant or the city that wishes to respond to any of the um, statements from, from members of the public? Um, I just, I, I appreciate these guys calling in uh, and, and uh, participating tonight. So thank you. Thank you all. All right, thank you. Uh, th thanks to our our applicants uh, and 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 to the city for your work on this. Um, I'm going to take this matter under advisement, and I know I don't we don't want to leave everyone hanging. I know you want to see this go through. I I do have uh, the new material that the applicant just sent in that I'll I'll take a look at when Andy sends that to me. Um, and, and I will just say, just for everyone's, um, I, I applaud what this applicant is trying to do. Um, I, you know, uh, and and I don't think anyone would say this is not um, a worthy project. And and uh, I certainly hope you'll stick to it, no matter the outcome of of this particular hearing. I, I will say. Uh, and just to uh, correct, you know, the record, we didn't say that. Uh, 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 the variances are never granted. They are uh, uh, rarely granted. And I think that's by by design of the legal system uh, that the, the we're in, the way zoning works in, in this country generally. Um, and I know it can be frustrating to uh, members of the public and to applicants, honestly, uh, to have a standard and to have a property and you're trying to improve the property and doing something good with the property and then to be told because of these few feet or here or there and we don't see that seem that far off that that we we can't do something that makes sense and is common sense and i i'm sympathetic to that uh unfortunately i, I am not you know, the city council, I'm not the one that makes the laws. I have to uh, just uh, apply them as it relates to this specific variance request. And so I will uh, attempt to do so and we'll uh, make a ruling in the in the coming days before, certainly before the holidays, early next week at the latest, so that you uh, can know how to go forward in this. But I, uh, I just wanted to say to thank you to this applicant for the good you're doing in the community and and your efforts to to try to make things better and uh, and encourage your continued working with the city to, to make our laws better and, and to make it easier to uh, try to do good common sense things that you're trying to do. Um, so so thank you and thank you to our wonderful city staff for all that you do. You live within the world that you've been given as well and uh, try hard to to apply and, 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 and to make everybody happy, but you also can't change the law just on your own. So so anyway, that will conclude our, our, our meeting tonight. Uh, again, thanks to everyone for your time tonight and for the public for making their comments. And again, I'll have a, a written a decision out uh, in the next few days. Thank, thank you. you.